Mike's Daily Podcast. Welcome to FF episode 2144, 2144 of Mike's Daily Podcast. So good to have you here. How are you today? Is it your weekend? Are you getting some time off? That's for me. No, that's funny. Don't make me scoff. I think I have to do a bunch of stuff at work and at home. At home, there's some issues I won't drone on about. Except that there's a drain that's clogged up. Ugh. Mike's Daily Podcast. I hate drains that are clogged up, don't you? What's that about? Why does that happen? I don't get it. Mike's I'm not Seinfeld. Daily And that's a good thing. Podcast. Because then I would have been really cute yeah. with a puffy, curly-headed fro that everyone knew me for. And then I would be not known for that and I'd be this bald guy that has been cancelled by cancel culture because of things I'd said and that would make me Seinfeld of course I'd be also very very rich and I wouldn't care and I'd live somewhere on the, around the periphery of Central Park and very happy but that's neither here nor there or anywhere or up there what's that it's in the trees it's coming you know what I am I've been bald for quite a while And I guess uh, I, I gave up the goatee. Wow. How long has that been? Close to eight years now? It's been a while, y'all. So if you are still used to me with a goatee, you got to get with it, folks. I do not and have not had one in a long time. So here's the thing is, we redefine ourselves from time to time, don't we? How would you like to be, though, like Dolly Parton, who is still like young and vivacious in many ways like her voice she and i have similar issues with our voice our voices never age like she sounds practically the way she sounded like when she first started in country music eons ago and i do basically the same and here's today's podcast picture and she's in her 70s or whatever and i'm in my 50s or whatever and I, oh, and actually, we've just gotten past the one month mark. We're counting down. We're inside one month to when Mike ages to 52. Ay, ay, ay. So, yeah, I watched a documentary on Dolly Parton last night. Don't think if I was Dolly Parton, I would have gotten all that facial work done. She really went, <laughs> run to town with it. I know, Basil. I know. Basil, you know what? You aged. You aged so gracefully. Yes, you did. You did. Oh, right about then he would have bitten my hand. Right about there. He would play. He played tough. He played rough and he'd bite my. Ow, that hurt. Oh. But I miss him. I miss that guy. I miss that guy. I miss that guy. And I say that just about every podcast. There are some of you who may know me. And may have known Basil And you don't realize that he's been gone for over three months And you go, Mike Why don't you tell these people Why don't you call these people up personally And tell them about it Well, maybe I should I tell you what I, won't, what I will not do And that is Do the thing on Facebook that people do Where they do the RIP thing And I can't stand that Because then people comment and post underneath And they, you know It becomes a popularity thing. How popular was this person? And I know Basil's popularity w was through the roof. But I'm not gonna... And there's some people I haven't talked to in so long that to call them and just to let them know that Basil's gone, like, they haven't talked to me in forever. Why do I care, you know? So I, ref I just give you this information over the podcast. And some of you have listened to many podcasts and heard me say this, and that's fine. Thank you. It's almost like you know Basil now. You've heard him bark, bark so many times if you've never actually met him. It's like you've known him. All right. At any rate, good success learning good lessons from bad leaders. This is a book I recently found. And I guess good leaders know... That loyalty to a person or organization is built When people see a mutually beneficial clear path 
to their self-interest and trust that their leaders see the path and perceive that leaders have loyalties beyond themselves. And then it says in this book, an excellent example of this principle appears in the domesticated canine. Dogs most clearly embody the steadfast loyalty that humans respect. Anyone who has ever owned a Labrador, a Golden Retriever, Collie, a Boxer, hey, it mentions a Boxer here, or a Beagle knows exactly what I mean, says this author, uh, E. Ar- Arthur Self. <laughs> what? PhD. His name is E. Arthur Self. Eh, really? I don't know. It th- well, there's a picture of him in the back. Yes, got. Let's see. It's from um, Michigan. Looks like he was. Uh, he's got a PhD, MA from the Mich- Michigan State University. All right. Well. He goes on to say, and then let's just wrap it up here. These dogs just cannot be disloyal to a good owner. Good owners make the relationship with their canines mutually beneficial. Similarly, good leaders demonstrate steadfast loyalty to their organizations and to the people who make those organizations run. Loyalty is better caught than taught. It is an effect. It is uh, it is an event. With longevity Loyalty also has appropriate limits If it doesn't It will be taken advantage of Loyalty is not And cannot be only a feeling It must be A behavior So I just want to Say that as we go outside a cafe anyway We're bringing Mike's Daily Podcast Somewhere in Podcastro Valley No, Podcastro Valley 10 Today What are you loyal to? What company are you loyal to? Or organization? Or belief are you loyal to? Does that company or organization or belief deserve your loyalty? Will that company or organization or belief listen to you? If you have a good point. I am a very good listener. Except when I'm really busy and people try to talk to me and I'm busy because I'm doing something. And I'm like, I, what, huh? Can you come back here in like five minutes when I'm not like nose deep in some kind of major project that I got to get done? Or if I walk away from this project, if I walk away from this project, it will not get done. It will fall apart and I have to go and spend 20 minutes. It's like that thing. Have you heard that that thing? Have you heard that thing? That thing that says that when we get interrupted... Every time we get interrupted, it takes us like twice as long to catch up to where we were at the point before we were interrupted and all that fun stuff. Ooh. I think uh, my point is that I sometimes... Now, some stuff you just got to drop and you got to take care of because of an emergency thing. But other things, it's like, can you just wait till I get this done before I... Anyway, that's what I, Cafe Anyway, have learned in my uh, world of managing and doing multiple projects and trying to get stuff done. But at the same time, you as a manager have to listen to what people say. I've known managers that did the whole thing where they just stared at the monitor and didn't listen at all. They went, yeah, yeah, uh huh, yeah. And they, and then it was like, with me I'll go Yeah yeah And then I'm like What? <laughs> it like finally Reaches my brain About Halfway through their talking And I'm like Wait I gotta drop this project And take care of the situation At hand So does your company do that? Does it listen to you? I guess is my question Does uh, Does th- Does it deserve your loyalty? I guess that's another question And you know I have to always process that with what I do in my world. Now I'm loyal to this here podcast. I've been doing it now for nine on 10 year and for 21,000, no wait, 2,144 episodes, 
2144 is today's ep- ep- episode. So, all of that to say, the podcast picture today is of me over there at the wonderful Pescadero. Near Pescadero State Beach, I think, is where this picture was taken. Just above Basil's Cove is where I had this podcast picture taken. And if you look closely, you'll see my pants are wet. It kind of looks like I may have um, relieved myself in my pants, but I did not. The wave hit me in just the right sort of angle to make it look like that. But you can see that picture at mikesdailypodcast.com. And you can call me at 336-MM-DAILY. 3 plus 3 equals 6. MM as in Mike Matthews. Daily as in what this podcast is to tell me what you think about this topic today. About how you feel about it all. And how did you feel about that dang debate? And the whole... Well, now... So, if you're a conservative, this is what you probably said. You probably said, Oh, Biden... Oh, Biden, you just admitted to the whole world you want all oil companies to fail. Therefore, you will not get you will not get into office because all those states that rely on the money from the oil companies and from fracking, you've just said basically you want to kill those companies so you will not get reelect you will not get elected rather or reelect. I guess he was in a sense if he gets elected, he is getting reelected in a way, even though he's never been president before. And then if you are a pro-Biden person, you're probably saying, oh my gosh, Biden did such a good job showing that Trump has lousy character. Although my favorite thing about that whole debate was what, when Trump kept saying over and over again, um, well, you, you, you had the opportunity to do it, Joe, and you didn't do it in eight years. So, And he kept calling him Joe. He kept calling him Joe, Joe, Joe. Did, did, did Biden call him Donald? Hey, Don, did he do that? But yeah, so Joe, Joe. And then at one point, so Joe is like defending himself saying, well, the reason why I couldn't do it in eight years was because I, uh, there was a, uh, the Congress was ruled by the Republicans. To which Trump said, well, Joe, you should have tried harder to change their minds. Joe, you should have done it, Joe. That was an interesting part Of this thing To me Anyway If you would like to see the video For today The short video clip It is now sitting On YouTube As you are listening to this Or you can check it out At MikeStaleyPodcast.com This is fantastic It's me I'm actually hearing myself here In the headphones And in this big massive speaker Over my head here at Cafe anyway Somewhere in Podcastro Valleyton It's fantastic Hey, have you heard this And then we'll wrap this up Have you heard this commercial yet? It's got a good message But it's done so horrible So horribly on the radio It's a radio commercial It's with these actors And it's trying to be a 911 call And this woman is like, oh my gosh, an SUV just drove around the train barricades as the train was going by and the train hit it. And the train hasn't stopped. It kept going. Oh my gosh. And it's basically an ad for trains. There are people, you know, coming up to train crossings, railroad crossings, not to go around the barrier, not trying to do it, which is like, duh. Yet it's sad. So many people die with the... Uh, With the whole complete Idiocy that they're going to actually Beat the train And then But what's interesting In this commercial This bad actor This actor that can't act for Beans Said Not that beans is something bad Beans I would act for beans Beans are delicious And They offer a little bit of protein But this It's This person that's doing the whole thing Like oh my gosh got hit by a a train And the train won't stop Like why won't the train stop Well trains don't stop It's That's a whole lot of metal Why that would even be like Oh my gosh why doesn't that train stop 
To me, it just baffles my mind. But apparently, this is a thing we need a radio commercial for. And there you have it. But it's a very important message. Don't try and think you can outspeed a train. You are not faster than a locomotive, like Superman. Look who's outside a cafe anyway, so we're a podcaster valley. I think I went a little too far to make that point. <sighs> Be careful around train tracks. Look who's here. Hello, Michael Marsh, it's Madame Blue Tobago, and that was a very good public service announcement. Oh, thank you. Yes. Have you ever ridden a train? Yes. Do you like riding trains? Yes. Are you faster than a speeding bullet? No. Oh. So, see, I thought you were Superman, but you're not. No, Michael Masu, but I dated him. Oh, he's from another planet. Krypton. Oh. Are you supposed to be German? I don't know. Mm Mm-hmm. Look who else is here. Hello, dear Mike. This is Mount Pino with a birthday attendant. And this is Bison Bentley. Do you know that? Mike, I hear there's a guy that says that he hates the sound of Bison Bentley Day. Yeah, hates my sound. Do you know that? Yeah, Ken, he's been on the show. By the way, uh, check out his podcast. Uh, It's called uh, Mornings with Maria. It's him and conversations with his mom. Yes, so Ken Ken likes to inform me every day about things he hates. So, so far the list includes Bison Bentley, includes the Dave Matthews Band. Ooh, I love people that say, that tell me, it is, there's been multiple people that have told me they don't like the Dave Matthews Band. To which I say, wow, uh, that's a groundbreaking statement. Uh, thank you. Um, you do realize there's an enormous army of people that dislike the Dave Matthews Band. It's like you've just said, I am really a big advocate for air. But here, let's break it down. The Dave Matthews Band does have some very talented musicians. The drummer, the uh, late uh, violin player, there was the, I think the clarinet player. They're just a very good band. Just maybe you don't like the songs And the weird singing style of Dave Matthews We're not related But I understand what you're trying to say And then what's the other thing he said he hated Oh he hated the voice of this guy Oh Mike this is Floyd the floor man Floyd yeah so Ken doesn't like the sound of your voice Okay I I hope you don't take offense to that Alright Just wanted to let you know about that That's okay. Can I sweep the floor? Well, we're outside and there's a bunch of dirt and you're basically sweeping grass, but okay. Because we're outside a cafe anyway. And I'm Floyd the Floor Man. He really hates your voice. That's too bad. Can I go? No. Oh, man. Yeah. Next show, it'll be the wonderful Floyd the Floor Man. Oh, no. And we'll also hear from uh, Shelly Shuhart. And the wonderful the guy. You mean John Deere, the engineer? That guy, yes. Thank you. Thanks for listening. Oh, uh, check out the show on the internet and other places. KKDV.com. Uh, I am on there from 9 a.m. until 4 p.m. on Sunday, tomorrow, and every Sunday. There's a link as well at Mike's Daily Podcast.com. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced. That's right, Seinfeld is basically bald. And performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at Mike's Daily Podcast.com. Email Mike now at Mike's Daily Podcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.